Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. The first lesson is from the second book of Samuel. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. And when the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan, the prophet, to David. He came to him, and he said to him, There were two men in a certain city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But instead he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guests who had come to him. Just then, David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house. For you have despised me and taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Then David said to Nathan, I, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord.
The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. Now when it says he ascended, what does that mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? And he who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, all to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Amen. 
Now on the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the Father, God the Father has set his seal. And then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And then Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts ever be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like you to imagine something. Or maybe go back into your memory banks. Did you ever have a time when you had just a most delicious dinner? And you had more than enough to eat. In fact, there was plenty left over. I think maybe of a Thanksgiving dinner. All that stuff that we don't normally have all together and it's all there there's just so much of it and the dinner is finished and people clean the plates and put things away they wrap tightly the leftovers put them in the fridge and the containers provided all of that and then everybody goes to take a nap now maybe about 10 o'clock 10 30 you sneak down to the kitchen and you open the fridge door and you start looking for that one thing that so enticed you in that meal, that so satisfied you, you said, boy, I gotta have more of that. And you looked, and you looked, and you looked some more. You started taking everything out of the fridge. Everything's on the kitchen table. Nothing is left. And you can't find it. It's gone. You look over at the sink. And there's the container that it was in. Somebody beat you to it. Now, what did you feel when that happened to you? What were you feeling just at that moment? Even more than what you were feeling, what did you think? And what did you do? There's lots of responses we could have. He said, well, well, I missed the opportunity. And just take something else. Or just say, rats, put it back to bed, or whatever. 
Or we could get angry, we could get frustrated, we could just say, hmm, whoever brought that to the dinner, I'm going to tell them to make more. It was so good. If you can get in touch with that, you may have an idea of what is in the people's minds and hearts as they chase Jesus down across the Sea of Tiberias to Caesarea. To Capernaum, actually, not Caesarea, excuse me. To Capernaum. And suddenly there they are and they find Jesus and he's there and they say, you know that bread you gave us? Give us some more. Jesus looks at them and looks around. Might have said to them also, do you see any baskets full here? Because they knew there were leftovers. But instead of giving them more of what they ask for, Jesus takes the opportunity, perhaps because of their frustration or their anger or whatever it is that they were feeling at the moment, and he takes it and he wants to use that energy and turn it around somehow. And so he begins to teach them using their hunger as a vehicle to teach. And he says to them, you know, you came to me because you saw that I gave you this wonderful bread on the side of the, of the mountain. And now you're hungry and you want more. If you toil and work for that kind of bread, you will always be hungry. That's just a fact of life, isn't it? Just in our opening story. You know, we had this big meal, we were really full. But later on in the day, after our body starts to process things, our belly gets a little empty, and so we decide, well, I want to put some more in there. That's what Jesus is talking about here. That if you're only looking for the bread that can satisfy your physical hunger, you will always be hungry. Maybe not at the moment, but in time. And you'll have to go look for more bread. Jesus is saying, all of us have a deeper hunger. All of us are looking for something much more profound in our lives. When we stop to think about it, we start to look at, why am I even here? What's my purpose for being here? What is it that I am meant to be or meant to do? That hunger for that kind of insight and knowledge also never leaves us. But, Jesus said, if you eat the bread that I give you, you will never be hungry that way. Because if you eat the bread that I give you, which is my life given for the world, you will find the answers that you seek. And you will always have access to that wisdom that knowledge, that understanding to those gifts of the Spirit of God that are part of living the way I will teach you. Well, then they ask, what must we do to get this bread? What must we do to do the works of God? And Jesus says, you don't need to do anything. It's already yours for the asking. It's you that needs to receive it, to open your hearts so that God can feed you as God fed the Israelites in the desert. Well, give us this bread always because we're tired of looking for it. Jesus takes a deep breath, shakes his head and says, you know, you just don't get it. I 
am the bread of life. Me. If you eat this bread, what I give you, not the bread that fills your belly, but the bread that fills your spiritual hunger, the bread that fills your soul, you will never be hungry because you realize, you will realize that your physical hunger will always be with you. And we just, that's part of your daily life. But this other quest that you have deep within you, the very reason you came chasing after me, will only be satisfied when you open your hearts to eat the bread from heaven. They still don't get it. You know, and that's okay. The disciples probably didn't get it either, as we've talked about before. They can be a little thick in the head, and so can we. But you see, there's a great gift that we have, and it's right there at that table. It's the bread of heaven. The bread of heaven that is given to us so that each time we take but this slight morsel of bread, our bellies are far from full. But because we are saying by taking that bread that Jesus is the bread of heaven, that Jesus is the answer, that Jesus is the way, and we take it to ourselves and we say we are willing we are willing to hear what God has to say to my heart. Then, then the gift will come and the bread will satisfy. This bread reminds us that our spiritual lives are very much tied up with our physical bodies and lives. Jesus made that very clear. We're not some sort of spirit imprisoned in this body of ours, but rather we are each unique and called into being by God. And that each of us has been called into being, as St. Paul teaches us, with a purpose, with gifts given by the Spirit, so that we can be about the business of building up the body of Christ, of building up the church. And for what purpose? Not to build magnificent edifices, but to go out into the world and to tell a hurting and broken world that there is an answer, that there is a way of living that will help us understand that the pursuit of the things of this world in the end is useless. And that the important things are the things of the heart, the things of the soul. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Are you hungry? Are you searching around in the refrigerator for those leftovers? Are you going to Jesus every time you pray and say, give me something? Whether it's relief from the anxieties I have or a cure for an illness I may have or something for my, my family or even my world. Give us something, God. Show us. How many times in the last few days have you simply raised your mind to God and been moved to praise and thank God for nothing more than simply being alive, simply having the air to breathe around us, simply having the food that we do have to eat, simply having a home to share? Or is every time we say, Jesus, we're on the verge of asking for something. That's the transformation Jesus can make with this bread of life. He can change our hearts. He can fill our souls so that we are less concerned about our bellies 
and more concerned about the life that God gives to our world. That's the transformation that Jesus works. And he works it right here and right now. Because at this table, he says to you, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will never hunger. Friends, open your hearts. Open your minds. Allow the Spirit of God to fill you to the brim and running over so that the 12 baskets will represent the fullness of your life. Not simply what's left over from dinner. This is what Jesus offers. And so I have a simple thing to tell you. Let's eat. Please stand with me now and profess your faith using the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate through the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of tears, you are the giver of joy. Hear us as we pray. Hear us as we pray for the sick. We pray for those with chronic illness, for those who have life-threatening conditions, and for those with inadequate medical care. We remember especially those who suffer from the coronavirus and the impact of the pandemic, and those we have been asked to remember, especially Joan, Barbara, Zena, Catherine, Rosemary, Bud, Pat, Joey, Abby, Joyce, and Linda. Bring your healing we need. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for all who are hungry. We pray for those who live in regions of drought and famine for those who cannot afford nutritious food, and for the vulnerable who are not adequately fed. Give us the food we need. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray for those who grieve.
We pray for those who mourn a loved one, for those whose communities are no more, for those who have lost their homes in natural disasters, especially from the wildfires in our western regions, from the floods in Europe and elsewhere, and for anyone who cannot imagine a joyful future. Give us comfort to restore hope. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for the world's victims. We pray for those who are caught in violence, for those who are trapped in others' self-seeking, and for those who suffer from neglect, especially the most vulnerable, those who are physically or mentally challenged, the elderly and the children. Grant us freedom from all evil. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Pray now for those entrusted with spreading the good news of Jesus, the bread of life, for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia, St. Thomas Parish in Mordentown, the Diocese of Kajokeji and their Bishop Emmanuel Murray, and Coiba Parish. Grant them wisdom and courage. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for ourselves. We pray for our families and friends. For all who have nurtured us and whom we are ch charged to nurture with the word of God, we remember especially Raymond, Mark, Cynthia, Jordan, Madeline, and Nicholas and Polly. Grant us generosity and love. God of the poor and the poor in spirit, we pray for your help against all that oppresses as we look forward to the kingdom you have promised and are bringing even now through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may be seated for a moment. Just uh, one quick announcement. Uh, next Sunday will be the last of our Church in the Park Sundays. So the 1030 service will not be here and it will not be at 1030. It will be at 10 o'clock and it will be at the South Hills Park uh, down in south, just south of Lebanon in the south part of the city. Uh, there's a pavilion mark, I think it's pavilion A that we're going to. The information is in the bulletin and also on the website. So we hope to see you there last of our three Church in the Park series. Um, so with that in mind, Terry, would you please introduce our guests? Walk in love as Christ loved us. Thank you, Father. Uh, we have two guest soloists today. Our organist, Thomas Mellon comes to us from France via Los Angeles. Uh, he's in Lebanon because his uh, fiance's family lives here. 
And during COVID, he asked to practice on the organ, and uh, in thanks for that, he's sharing his gifts with us this morning. Uh, he just uh, got a job in Boston at St. Cecilia Roman Church on the um, back bay, right? And Gwendolyn um, is no stranger to any of us. She's been sharing her gifts with us for uh, a very long time, and we're always grateful. And all she wanted me to say today was this is her post COVID debut. So, <laughs> first time she's sung in public since uh, we all shut down for COVID. So, thank you, Gwendolyn. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. We thank you for feeding us with this bread. May it strengthen us that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.